Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. Oh, this new crazy mother. good <clears throat> what's up man how you doing you know it's thursday most wrestling is in the books having a little dranky drank on my boy roman yeah. reigns <laughs> uh, so let me whoever's watching listening I, I gotta fill you in real quick so sage and i sage the mark and i were just having a conversation about old pd pablo so if you're on the if you're on the East Coast, I need you to chime in on this because P.D. Pablo to me was – he had his little run. What was it called? Diary, uh, writing in my diary? What was writing in my diary and still writing in my diary too. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Something like that. Second note. <laughs> so is this th – those were both of his albums? Yeah. I think the first one was like writing in my album or writing in my diary. And then the second one was writing in my diary, still writing in my diary, second entry. So what's the third album going to be called? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, bro. <laughs> running, running out of my diary. So would you book. say, yeah, um, Ditch Diary bought iPad. Do you think that, would you say North Carolina by P.D. Pablo is the East Coast version of Lil Kiki Southside down here in Texas? Yes. Because <laughs> Southside is not a great song at all. Southside. Well, Southside. <laughs> yeah. But when you hear, if you're at the club or you're out and about, and I, I asked because I was listening to uh, some something on Spotify the other day, some channel, and of course I'm jamming, whatever, whatever was playing. And then Lil Kiki, Southside came on, and I'm like, man, I don't know why this song is good. It's not. But man, this song is great. Because this is Southside. So I wonder, would you, do you think that Petey Pablo's North Carolina is on the same page as Lil Kiki's Southside? Yeah, the only thing is that, like, no one knows outside of Texas South Southside, but North Carolina was a hit. But I, I, I mean, would it was think a certified still... club banger, son. I was like, ah, yeah, North yeah. Carolina. Look at my shirt. I, I, I took my sh I used to take my shirt off at, at the club and spin it in the air. And people will be like, Yo, like a helicopter. You'll put that shirt back on. And I'm like, all right, sorry. <laughs> but if I was in Charlotte or like anywhere in North Carolina right now, and I heard that song out one night, oh, I'd lose my mind in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, man. I would. Uh, yeah, I would definitely be all over that. Doing the sprinkler, doing the real running man, doing the new yeah. running man, hitting it. Arr, let's go. <laughs> I'd be in the same boat. Same boat. So this week in wrestling was news-wise fairly slow. Well, I guess from the last time we talked uh, and did the podcast last week, Paige and Del Rio got or got engaged. That's a bunch of... Uh, all right. I know we hinted at it last week, but let me just throw... I'm just going to officially ask it. If you're 40... Do you care with kids? Do you care about marrying a twenty-three-year-old? Hmm. Marriage. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Bro, man. there's there's one <laughs> one thing on my mind if I'm forty and my girl is in her twenties. One thing on my mind only, and it and it's definitely not marriage. I can tell you that. So, I have more power to them. I wish the best, but. And, oh, by the way, uh, don't know if you read this, but officially, Del Rio's restaurant's opening here in San Antonio. Yo. It's, it's official. Official on uh, November, I think it's like 18th or 19th or something like that. And so he's going to be there, and Rey Mysterio's going to be there. 
is is his website still showing that he hasn't paid the bill? Yo, that was the best thing. <laughs> So for, any, for those that are listening to it, Del Rio's opening this restaurant here in San Antonio. And I went to the restaurant's website and pretty much said this website's down. And which basically historically means somebody hasn't paid their bill. So yeah, it was. <laughs> so he uh, posted a video on Instagram like an hour ago saying that outside of the restaurant saying that they're opening up um, in the middle of November, that it's legit. They got all the permits, all that good stuff. So it looks like you and I have plans the weekend of November 18th. You know it, son. I'm getting them tacos. They better have the best chili relleno. I'm telling you, no guacamole. I'm telling you, all the mole, but doesn't taste like peanut butter. We getting it gone, man. Margaritas better be on point. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to say, I don't know what I'm going to have. Probably, I'll probably go with enchiladas first. No, nah, or... or uh, Asada. That's how you can tell when a place has good tacos. If you get those Asada tacos. But yeah, I'm going to go. And uh, so, yeah, we got to check that out on, on see him and Rey Mysterio. And I'm sure Paige will be there. Why not? I mean, you know what? I'm going to say this, man. If we can get up to 115 followers before the restaurant opens, I will live stream the entire event. From us walking through those doors to us leaving. Now I can't, I can't. I mean, I might be a little drunk. I'm just saying, but we <laughs> we we gonna record all the way through. We're gonna post it. So let's get that 115 followers, man. Let's do this. Yeah, you know, we should. We'll do 115 followers. We'll stream the whole thing and try. If if you you know what, we'll even you know what I'm willing to even try a Q and A. Like if I get to go up and see Del Rio for a second, I'll see if uh, if we get a couple of followers to throw in some questions that we could ask Del Rio. That are legit. Obviously, if you ask me about personal life stuff, Del Rio ain't gonna answer that. But I mean, if I get to meet Del Rio and Rey Mysterio, then yeah, I'm asking. I'll ask a Twitter question from one of our followers, or maybe a couple. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, when you say followers, are you talking about subscriptions on the podcast? Twitter followers. Hmm. All right. So the way that we have it right now is we have, you know, about 68 followers on Twitter. And we've got about 25 to 30 followers on from a subscription basis. So I would say maybe 115 is a little low because 50. So a combined total of 150 between subscriptions to the audio podcast and – um, and then uh, and and the Twitter, and getting the Twitter. So if we can get a, a total of 150 between the two. You know, we'll, we'll make it pop. It we'll make that pop. And you know what? I might even the mark might even go out and say that hey, someone in San Antonio is a subscriber and goes to the restaurant. When we go to the restaurant, I will buy the first round. How's that? Yeah. You know what? If if you're well, you I agree. one person, but you got to be subscribed and you got to share. And I will pick one person and I will buy the first round. Yeah. All right. I completely agree. I'm in the same boat. Um, if you're under 21... I'll buy you a couple tacos, or I'll buy you a uh, buy you a meal, as long as you're subscribed, or at least just pull it up on your phone, show me you subscribed, and we'll uh, or at least just 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 go to the restaurant and subscribe for a minute, just That's subscribe, right. and then you can unsubscribe <laughs> as soon as you leave if you want. Go for a free meal on us. <laughs> That's how you get this free food. Yeah. My wife's gonna like that when she listens to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why. You- Whoever's going, your ass is ordering a la carte. By a la carte, <laughs> that means it's one taco, and it's going to be a bean and cheese or a crispy taco. That's right. It's going to be the go. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, it'd actually be cool. And you know what? Uh, if you are in the San Antonio area, uh, hit us up. Just let us know because we're going to the Royal Rumble as well. So, love to meet you guys um, just, to, just to get out and have some fun. So, 
Uh, but on to Raw and, and SmackDown, because other than that, I think it was a pretty slow, pretty slow news week. So uh, the opening of Raw, it had, uh, of course, a promo with Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. And that's what I remember, because one, one of the things I remembered is Chris Jericho hyped up in the ring him saying, guess what? Hmm? Hmm? You just made the list. He hyped it up. So it makes me wonder, do you think he's going to turn face by Royal Rumble and fight Kevin Owens for the title? That'll just be like a quick feud. I think so. I, I think it's only natural. I mean, you're going to, he can't stay his quote unquote best friend forever. And uh, people are loving the gimmick. I love the gimmick. It's funny. It's probably one of the best things that is going for Raw right now. And that's saying a lot because there's not really much going on for Raw right now. So I think I would be more interested to see them two go at it than actually see Rollins and KO go at it, which is kind of weird for me to say that because, I, I mean, I like both of those guys, but yeah, I'm not as invested in them too as I am in anything Chris Jericho does. So I think they're trying to build Chris Jericho very slowly – into a face so that he can feud with Kevin Owens. He's not going to beat Kevin Owens for the title, but it'll be a feud that can carry Kevin Owens from like December to February, where they start really, really building for WrestleMania. Um, but yeah, because Chris Jericho is getting over. Hey, he could do whatever he wants. He could be a heel. He could be a face. It doesn't even matter. So but why not? But why not for him to become champ, man? I think that that would be more intriguing storyline to have KO chase the title af after his best friend stole it from him. I think that would be interesting. Yeah, maybe. Um, like, maybe, because, I mean, I, I don't know if you've realized this, but if you think about it, like, Jericho is that wily veteran. Maybe he loses title fights. Maybe he doesn't. But he's got wins over Sami Zayn and AJ Styles. AJ Styles at WrestleMania, Sami Zayn, uh, about a month and a half, two months ago. So it like, he's got legit wins, and he's legit beating people. He hasn't beaten Seth Rollins, obviously, but when he fights on, like, Raw, like, he's legit beating these guys. So I think they're doing a slow build for him. Not that he's going to be this huge main eventer or anything like that, but I think that they're going to have him turn face. You know what? Now I think about it. They're going to have him turn face. And then we'll probably see Kevin Owens, Finn Balor at WrestleMania. Now I think about it. Because Jericho will fight Kevin Owens for the title, you know, just uh, December through February. And then when that's done, then they'll be in full Kevin Owens, Finn Balor mode. Mm -hmm. But then hey. again, I guess if that's the case, that makes me wonder, Finn Balor's not supposed to be back by the Rumble. So if Kevin Owens is going to fight Finn Balor at WrestleMania next year, does that mean it? And, and, and Balor's not going to win the Rumble and obviously get to pick a title. Does that guarantee a SmackDown guy is going to win the Rumble? Man, it's getting deep. It's yeah, getting deep. Definitely. That's how I'm going to make my pick. Definitely is, man. Um, I think that uh, Survivor Series is going to be a good tale of the tape. I think whatever team wins, the other team is going to win WrestleMania. So did uh, – maybe I missed it. On Raw, they accepted the challenge, didn't they? Yes. Stephanie did, like, a backstage segment. I can't remember who was there. I know Foley was there, but I thought someone else was there as well. And uh, or maybe it was just them two. But, yeah, she said that, yeah, we got to come up with a team to build. And it's been, it's, it's been a slow build for both sides, understandably, more so on the SmackDown side than the Raw side, which we'll talk about when we get to, to SmackDown, because I got an interesting theory that I want to see your opinion on. Okay, so let me know if I have to ask this later on, but so who is going to be the Raw 5, and who's going to be the SmackDown 5? No oh, man, for which one? Because obviously there's going to be three. So there's to... three. There's the girls' match, tag team matches, and the, the main kind of singles competitors match. Yep. So who do you think is going to represent Raw, and who do you think is going to represent SmackDown? Okay, so from a singles perspective, uh, if it's five on five, yeah. So Raw definitely has to have Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens, right? Can we agree on those? Yeah, Seth Rollins, 
Kevin Owens. I, I want to say Roman Reigns, but I yeah. can only really say Roman Reigns if he has the if he doesn't have the belt. Um, it's Roman then, Reigns. He's definitely going to be in there. All right. So then Roman Reigns. I gotta say, you gotta have Chris Jericho in there, man. I think that's going to create some interesting dynamic there. So that's four, and then I would think that you would want someone from NXT, maybe like a Sami Zayn, or what about Rusev? I think Rusev's going to defend the title at at, at Survivor Series. Survivor. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it would be. You need filler matches before those events, so I think you're going to have a title match up there. Huh. Um, yeah, or so you think some kind new... of... What about Braun Strowman? No, I, I think they're saving Braun Strowman for someone. I just don't know oh. who. Sami Zayn. Did you, did you see what happened on Raw? Yeah, but I, I don't think that's going to last past the next pay-per-view. Hell in a Cell. I, oh, okay. I can't see that lasting, man. I, yeah, I, and I think Sami Zayn is going to be one of those five anyway, so. Okay. So what about the SmackDown five? I mean, so I think we could agree for sure, Cena and AJ, no matter what, and uh, Ambrose. Yeah. So if – I thought Cena was gone for like three months. I think he uh, could fight at WrestleMania or uh, Survivor Series. Okay. Survivor Series. So barring that he is actually – going to, to do this event, I would say AJ, Cena, Dean Ambrose, The Miz, and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, poor Black Neville still gets no love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, don't even get me started on that, man. I'm a little upset about that, but we'll, we'll talk about that again, man. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, you know, I feel like we should be starting this stuff off with SmackDown instead of Raw. <laughs> I mean, I know Raw starts on Monday, but damn. We might have to. You know yeah. what's funny is that <laughs> I'm pretty sure. How tall do you think Black Neville is? 5'8"? Five, five, uh, he's like 6'1". He can't be 6'1". There's no way he's taller than me. 5'11", 6'1". 5'10", 5'11", 6'1", somewhere in there, man. You know what's funny is I call, I call him Black Neville, but if I met him face-to-face -face and he came up to me and was like, yo, man, I heard you've been calling me Black Neville. I'd probably say sorry real quick because the dude's pretty big and I'd get punked out in a heartbeat. And then next week I'd be like, oh, man, Creed's a pretty good wrestler, man. I've always said that on the podcast. <laughs> I'd get hey, punked out in a heartbeat. Don't forget, man, we got an open challenge to him and Otunga. They still haven't answered the call. No kidding, man. But we'll get to the SmackDown piece in a second. Um, so I'll be honest, Raw was SmackDown won this week, but I didn't – there was – so I was watching Raw, and I thought about watching the Monday Night Football game, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to dedicate my three hours this week to Raw because Goldberg's coming back. And with Goldberg coming back, I had to sit through the Golden Truth and Mark Henry versus the Shining Stars and T Titus O'Neil. Well, good thing you only got to see it once because I was watching it on Sling – and my feed messed up, and not only did I watch it one time completely through, I ended up watching it a second time completely through. Ugh. I'm sorry you had to sit through that. Yeah, and then it's pretty rough. I, I had to see Bo Dallas versus White Neville, real Neville. Um, but Bo Dallas just doesn't do it for me, man. I was a big Bo Dallas NXT guy, and I just I can't get into him on Raw. So what are they doing with him? I I like the idea that he's turning on Curtis Axel, only for the simple fact is now we're going to get to see Curtis Axel on TV. I don't like the fact that he's jobbing, but what, what, what's the whole premise behind that, man? Are they building him up to feed him to somebody? Or are they going to make him a legit star? He's going to get traded to SmackDown to join the Wyatt family. What, what's going on with Bo? What do you think? Nothing. They're just trying something. It's like uh, Bo Dallas is kind of like a, a, video, a video game that you bought and you play it a couple times and you're like, man, this video game sucks. And then in six months, you're like, shit, well, 
ah, I paid for it. I might as well play it. And then you play it like three or four times. And then you just give it up. So I, I don't doubt that he's got like talent and all that. Just he, he didn't go anywhere. He didn't. I don't know. And I've heard him. I mean, talk on the mic and NXT. That whole gimmick I thought was really good. Just I don't know. They flip flopped on him. He was a jobber. He wasn't a jobber. Social outcast. Now he's not social outcast. So it. It's just done damage, so I don't think they're going anywhere with him. I think, honestly, he'll be a jobber, and he may even be losing to Braun Strowman in a couple months, for all I know. So who's in the worst spot, him or Nev- or uh, Black Neville? But the answer to that question 100% of the time is Black Neville. And I don't care who you say. Like You could take Bo Dallas out of it. Uh, you could You could say anything. My answer will, whenever you say who's in a worse spot, Trump, Clinton, or Black Neville, my answer 120% of the time is going to be Black Neville. That's terrible, man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Who's in a worse Uh, spot? ISIS? Darren. Yeah, or or Black Neville. My eye just can't stand him being on TV, man. Maybe I'm just holding on to old stuff, and maybe he'll prove me wrong one day, but just... Ever since that Seamus beat down and he came out smiling, I was just like, man, you were not ready to to be on my TV. You didn't like the uh, my pixels. You didn't like the spelling bee? The what? The spelling bee. He, he had a gimmick where he was spelling things on his way to the ring. You don't remember that? And they did it for like... Yes, they did that for like two weeks, man. It was like, I am a W I N N E R, and I'm going to beat your A S S. Get the hell out of here! When was this? I, I kid you not, man. It had to be like maybe a month or two ago, man. They they did that for like two weeks straight, and ever since then, I don't I don't think I've heard him on the mic. Oh man, I'll go back on I'll go back on Hulu and. And find the episode. It's good. It, it's good that I didn't see that. If I would have saw that, I would have. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's pretty rough, bro. Yeah. I, ugh. So, but yeah, like I was saying on Raw, yeah, that's the thing with it. Be three hours after the roster split is just so long. Uh, Dana Brooke versus Bailey. I mean, it wasn't bad. I think Dana Brooks improved a ton. I think she botched the ending. I think she was supposed to put her foot on the ropes, and she. Yo, just... the, the gift files on that botch was yeah. so great. Man. I, think, uh, I saw that match and thought, "All right, don't don't really know what's going on with the ending of this match." The match itself was decent, but the ending of the match I watched and was like, "Hmm." I hey, Dana, I'm that's pretty sure you don't know that you're not six two. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, I'm very sorry, you're, it, man. Man. <laughs> you're not six foot five. Um, and then Braun Strowman and the Mile High, the Mile High Trio was cool. So I, I I'm not. Yo, sure. that match was yeah. off the chain, son. Oh my god. Was good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yo, my, yo, the Afro guy. Mm-hmm. Yo, he got killed twice. Twice. Yo. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That is it. He got body slammed or rolled out of the rolled out of the ring, but did get rolled out all the way. And then Brian yeah. Strowman threw the other guy, and he landed right on his head. And I was like, "Oh my god, what the hell is going on?" And then the other guy tries to run, and Brian Strowman picks him up. And I was like, "Oh my god, there's no, there's only one guy outside of the ring." And he tosses the dude like over the rope, and like the dude just he could have just did the Kofi and just went like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going over the ring, and the guy was there, and I was like, "Okay, all right, all right." And then later on in the match, that same Afro guy, man, he, did... dude, I, I don't know what happened, but he got like he got crushed or something because he was like completely gone for the rest of the match. No one saw him at all. Cameras were panning away. The ref was like, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> Yo, <laughs> shout out to the Mile High Club or whatever you guys, do, the Mile High Trio, you guys. Earn that paycheck, baby. So Earn are the paycheck. jobbers becoming more popular than Braun Strowman? Dude, the jobbers are becoming more popular than everybody. Because, I mean, when we get to SmackDown, we're going to talk about Braun Strowman's <laughs> first jobber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any man with two fists has a fighting chance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so... 
Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, I like what they're doing with Braun Strowman. I'm cool with him fighting jobbers, and now he's gonna fight um Sami Zayn who could carry him in a good match. Um the yeah. cruiserweights, man. So they cut this crappy backstage promo. And I feel like these cruiserweights are just being held uh fed, excuse me, like scripted lines and they're not great actors tj perkins especially like if they were just able to kind of free flow and spit off the mind i think they'd do fine but that the uh the six-man tag dude oh man that Matt, the cruiserweight still impressed me but what is it they don't really get huge pops yeah um um they they, they kind of they kind of cut that from hulu Ugh. So, a... <laughs> but... so I'll, I'll fill you in. They had a six-man tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I remember right, it was Gullick, Nice, and Kendrick versus Perkins, uh, Rich Swan, and Cedric Alexander. And it was a back-and-forth match, really cool spots. But at the end, uh, Brian Kendrick... Gave the, uh, ended up putting the Swan in the captain's hook, and he tapped. And I, I'm cool with that because obviously they're building can up we, Brian Kendrick. Can we not call it the captain's hook, please? It, it's the bully choke. I am. Oh, oh yeah, my, they're not gonna say that. That's terrible, man. I don't know why they changed it. The the bully choke. Yo, I I didn't catch the match because it was cut from Hulu, but I did see, like, the intro, and TJ Perkins, just, TJ Perkins took a while to come out, which was kind of weird. Maybe he was letting the, the, the crap, maybe he thought he was going to get a big pop, so he's letting the pop soak in, but I'm not saying the cruiserweight division's doing bad or getting off to a bad start. I think that it just, you know, that's actually, I, I think that they're letting it become organic. So you have this wealth of new talent that has to prove themselves and they're not doing anything flashy like pyro during the entrances. Or if you think about it, they're not even doing like catchphrases. Like TJ Perkins doesn't have a catchphrase that all the fans can cling on to. So they're just letting it be organic. Just what happens in the ring will eventually catch on. You let the heels be the heels, the faces be the faces. And it'll eventually take on because these guys are good in the ring. So you know what? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm definitely a fan of the cruiserweight. Um, I don't know if I care too much about the purple robes, but yeah, I'm a fan of what's going on. I'm just tired of the, this whole tag team and triple team matches for the cruiserweights. I think it's I think it devalues it devalues them, man. These are young guys who can go in the ring. Why in the hell are you only going to give them a spot for like a minute, half, two minutes a piece? I think that's just terrible, man. I think it sets a ugly precedence. It's not gonna precedence, but it doesn't. It's not helping the cause to get these guys over. So I, I think you're doing more harm than good by making them always in a tag team. Yeah, it's. Is it because they only have like six, seven, eight people? But that's four matches, three or four matches that you could have. Or two to three matches that you could have. I just, and they've got at least six. So, and I'm not saying that all six have to fight every night, but geez, like let's have at least two cruiserweight champion or night championships, two cruiserweight matches every every night. I don't. Is that so hard? Put one in the first hour and one in the second hour, one in the second hour and one in the third hour. It doesn't have to be back to back. Maybe it's because they have to change out those ropes. And stop changing out the damn rope. <laughs> it takes too much work. Yeah, stop changing the ropes and stop making everything purple. We get it. It was cool the first time around. We don't need it anymore. I yeah, feel like this- a hypocrite because I thought in episode two I said I like the ropes, but I don't know. It's if if that's the only if that's the hindrance from them being able to put them, you know, in one hour and one in the second hour, then just do away with it. We don't need it. It really don't. I, I put it on just want to just want to watch. Yeah, put it on SmackDown. I, I just want to watch the match. That's it. Just want to watch the match. Yeah. So, and then after that was the ending of Raw. 
And I want to say the Bill Goldberg thing was maybe 20 minutes from start to finish. Dude, I had marked out bad. I'm not going to lie. The second they showed him coming to the ring and walking in from the back, I thought, all right, all right, this is pretty legit. And then the pyro, him breathing out the smoke, I... So in WC, he looked like a dragon back in WCW, but the smoke. And then you and I were talking the other day about, I asked you like, Hey man, you know, Goldberg's a 49 year old veteran. What if he comes back all fat? And you said, no, 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 no. He's in shape. Don't worry about it. So I saw some, uh, I saw him on raw. He looked great. And then he posted on Instagram, some uh, training videos of him doing MMA training. And then I saw his, saw him training. And I'm like, Oh man, he's still a big guy. Um, obviously not as big as when he was, you know, 30 something, uh, in WCW or whatever, but he looked great. And I marked out and the crowd marked out and it was a great moment. And he didn't come back. What I loved is he didn't come back, uh, to cut just Brock Lesnar. I could beat you. You're next and leave like his old WCW promo short and sweet. He came out and he was in tears. He was emotional at the moment. I saw a man that was like matured because he even said to himself, he didn't leave the WWE on the best of terms the day. And he's just, it, it, you know, his quote said it where he said, there's not, there's, I, I think he said something along the lines. I came back to be a superhero because there's not very many of us left. And then he, he was out there hugging kids in this super over face. And I'm like, Man, he kind of reminds me of like a a retired Superman, like just coming out for that final fight to take out one bad guy. Maybe he wins, maybe he doesn't, but he was appreciative of being there and super emotional with his fans. And then they kept some dude in the front row. I think next that was to his dad. Wife and kid. Yeah, I think that nah. might have been his dad. Yeah, but that guy looked younger than Goldberg. I thought it was some politician, some uh, dirty dude, governor dude or something. <laughs> no, 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 not, that guy. not that guy. Oh, okay. okay. There was some dude in a suit that had like a, a John Laurinaitis looking haircut, like, you know, the part or whatever in the middle. But okay. he, uh, they kept showing him the whole time. So I thought he was just some like local politician or something. But uh, yeah, I, I marked out. I loved seeing Goldberg back. Yeah, I'm a big Goldberg fan and probably one of the biggest. And I, yo. I was hoping that they were going to do the whole knocking on his door and him walking to the ring. And they didn't get to knock on the door, but he did get to walk. And I think that's kind of the whole nostalgia thing that I love about it is just, like, him walking. But I thought it was pretty funny because everybody's all clapping. But then he saw the New Day. And, of course, New Day acting out. Especially, yeah. Especially Big E with the eh, double thumbs. <laughs> yeah. That was so amazing, man. But, yeah, man, I absolutely loved it. I'm glad that he's back, even though it's only going to be for potentially a short time. Just as a Hall of Famer, and and I know that most people probably wouldn't agree that he's a Hall of Famer just because of how short of his time was in wrestling. But you have to remember, man, he was one of the guys that helped catapult WCW and make it a much a must watch. Um, everyone's going to remember. The streak. Everyone's yeah. going to remember Goldberg's streak. So it's. So what's uh, more important? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, I, that, I mean, that was essentially it, man. I, I thought that it ended great, and I'm glad that they gave him the final spot. And I was impatient throughout the entire time watching it. When I, when I was watching it a little bit live, I was just like, when the hell are they going to come out with? Goldberg, when they came out, or they come out with Goldberg, and then they put on a match, and I ended up falling asleep live. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm glad that Hulu didn't cut it, and I, I didn't think they would because it was the biggest segment, and it, it's definitely worth the wait. I, I wish you would have came back ten years sooner, but this is all bittersweet, man. Love it. So, whose streak in the wrestling world is more important? The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak. Or Bill Goldberg's, uh, you could say 173 win streak, but has just it just getting to 100. And I think he beat, if I remember right, 
I think Raven might have been his hundredth win, but I know it was on Nitro or whatever. Um, so what's 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 more prestigious in the rest the wrestling world, the Undertaker streak or Goldberg streak? I don't think he beat Raven in a hundred because I think he lost his match when he was like a hundred and two or hundred and five or something right there. I thought he was around like the 50 to 70 range when he won it. Cause he won the U S title from Raven. He did, but I think it's 173 now because oh. they went back and included all the house shows he won at. Ah, uh, okay. Then that makes yeah. sense. Then, yeah. That you sounds know, yeah, right. I remember I was watching nitro and, he was like 40 something and oh, and then the next week I watched Nitro and I'm like, wait a minute, wait, whoa, how was he 46 and oh? You just said last week he was 40. So they included house shows in there too. Dude, I used to watch Thunder on Saturdays to watch the street continue. Yeah, same here. So He's... Thunder was on uh, Saturdays, then switched to Thursdays so it can compete with SmackDown. Yep. And yeah, I was the same way. And what's crazy is Thunder sucked if you look back because all the big names. Hogan was never on it, and they'd, they'd have like, they have DDP. DDP was on it a lot. DDP. Yeah, it was, it was definitely their B show. Like, yeah, I think they just threw it on there just to compete with SmackDown. But so is Goldberg streak or Undertaker's? Um, man, that's a good question, man. I think, I think Goldberg streak was more important to the wrestling industry. I think Undertaker streak was just more of a nostalgia thing like i don't it, it was just fun to it's who's gonna be him who's gonna beat him who's gonna beat him but the funny thing about it is that no one was really keeping track of his streak until like when he was fighting Shawn michaels yeah the the the, the, the mid to late teens right yeah because honestly man when he fought john cena or triple h the first time i i didn't even about any streak it wasn't important to me like didn't signify anything and i didn't even know to be honest with you and i watched you know a whole lot of wrestling then we're like we got to see it week after week after week and his legacy when they show the films and the vignettes the streak is like the most important thing to his legacy to yeah. his career and it was what brought people week after week after week i mean we're talking about like 100 plus weeks of being undefeated which is completely unheard of and no one has ever done it so so you didn't care about undertaker's streak when he fought big bass man and hell in a cell and at the end he hung him by his neck with the brood I, oh, and then man. big boss man showed up on raw the next night would just a red, like red around his neck and saying he was sore because he was hung the night before. <laughs> nah, I didn't care about none of that, man. It was garbage. Yeah. Straight Goldberg garbage. Streak. Goldberg streak is way better to me. Um, yeah. SmackDown then. SmackDown was good, I thought. I liked the opening. I think uh, Randy Horton fought in the opening versus Luke Harper and the Wyatts did their, their magical tricks. But then Kane came out, which was pretty cool. So I don't know if they're setting up some type of tag team match or something. But yeah, it went too bad. Or a, a Luke Harper versus Kane feud. Yeah, I, I'm liking it too. Um, I, I didn't think that I I would like it because the last couple of events that these two have been involved in have been just kind of lackluster at best. But I, I'm liking what they're doing with Kane as well, that we're getting not an oversaturation of Kane. We're mm -hmm. getting them here, and we're getting them there. I love it. Um, it's kind of – it's it's tolerable. I I definitely – I just – I enjoy it. I'm enjoying it. So I keep doing that, and hopefully they'll introduce Sister Abigail sooner than later because that's the next piece of this entire puzzle. It's Bo Dallas. It should be, at least. <laughs> Bo Dallas doesn't know if he's a man or a woman, so he goes by Super... He goes by Sister Abigail. Sister Abigail, excuse me. I, I Honestly, man, I just... I want Micah. I want Micah to show up, and I want her to be Sister Abigail. And I've asked her, and she's just kind of dismissed it. I know she's not a wrestler, but if we have Bray and we have uh, Bo 
and we have Luke Harper. I think she'd be a natural fit, man. And she's there all the time. She's like behind the stage every every time. So <laughs> just bring her out. Let her be. Let her be Sister Abigail. I'll suspend belief. So, I got to say, when watching SmackDown, the one of the best, most hottest things I saw by far, by far was when Alexa Bliss fought Naomi and Alexa Bliss came out in the Chucky outfit. Biggest moment of the night. Biggest moment of the night. Biggest moment. I love it, man. That's what that's that's what it gets. He gets, <laughs> it gets, it gets the soundboard treatment, like uh, Alexa Bliss's Freddy Krueger outfit was yeah, one hundred. You win my my superstar of the week, Alexa Bliss, by far. Like she did her thing, uh, and like uh, you were telling me earlier that she used to uh, do the 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 one uh, glove thing back in NXT days. And man, after seeing that, I just, I, she's just on another level. I think, and then plus, if you think about it, uh, she's really good in the ring. Um, I mean, pretty decent. No, Naomi, I, I mean, we've talked about this before um, on the podcast, that Naomi's probably the most athletic woman. And that... I think Alexa Bliss can can pretty do can pretty can, she could do decent in the ring. So, but yeah, that Freddy Krueger outfit, oh my god, that thing completely did it for me. She was on point. She was amazing. Um, and, and kudos to her. You know, she's she's been called up. Uh, you know, works her tail off, and she does a great job. So, you know, I can't complain uh, whatsoever on what she's doing whatsoever on what all she's doing but yeah uh, and then after that match i think smackdown was was pretty good from there um overall show i, I definitely think smackdown and you can let me know your thoughts in a minute i think smackdown's a really really good show overall and that it's uh, it, it definitely won my show of the week smackdown right, man, sorry about that no you're good you're good, uh, but SmackDown definitely won my show of the week. Uh, you didn't interrupt me or anything, but but yeah, SmackDown definitely won show of the week. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Are you trolling me? <laughs> gave the uh, gave you the um, respect. For the Freddy Krueger outfit, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, I I love that she brought it back. She did that in NXT, and um, I thought it was amazing. And um, I did want to ask you, man. So, f <clears throat> a few months back, when Naomi debuted the the nightmare, the um, uh, the Neon Nightmare, you weren't a fan. No, it looked like a goddamn club. <laughs> I just want to see if your opinion of it changed, because I, I still think it's one of her best moves. Yeah, it's changed big time, because it's shorter. Um, it's shorter, and it. I still don't, you know, and I'm going to piggyback off what I said last week. It's It's cool, the lights, the black lights, I still don't know what her gimmick is. So, like, if she came and talked in the ring, you talk in a character. I don't know what that character is. Like, it, what 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 is that character? If I came out, it's it's like her entrance and all that stuff didn't really have a character to it. So, if I came out wearing all black and some super gothic music and came to the ring and was like, "Hey, Sage the Mark, I'm gonna beat you today because you're a bad person. Take it easy, bro." You would look at me and be like, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 Wait." wait. You came out like some emo vampire, and you yet you talk like this this wuss. So I, I don't know. She just it, she doesn't have a gimmick, right? 
she, I, I don't know. I think she does. I don't think you necessarily have to talk in order to have a gimmick. So that's what, what's her gimmick? She just left the club. She, she's yeah. She's just she's a <laughs> she's a she, she former she, dancer turned wrestler and bringing the the lights and the energy. She's bringing that energy to you, son. She's making you believe. You know what it reminds me of? So Glacier. Glacier didn't have a gimmick. What the hell kind of gimmick was that? I used he had to, a gimmick, man. I used it was to Sub Zero, bro. It was. Oh, that's it was, right. It was promotion for Mortal Kombat because it was on Kombat TNT back Conquest. then. You're yeah, right. it's Mortal Kombat Conquest, which the season finale for that was was dope, man. I was waiting for season two for like five years and it never came, and I was like, oh my god, what the heck? You're right, man. You're right. A complete with Chris Lambert, the same guy who played Raiden yep. in the movie. You're right. Yeah, so you know, I mean, you don't have to have a gimmick in order to. I mean, you 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 don't have to talk to have a gimmick. It it worked. Now whether it was receptive to everybody, eh, you know, I, I would say Naomi's a little bit more over than than Glacier was. But oh yeah, and uh, what else was on Smack? Oh dude, so the Spirit Squad are apparently, I assume, like legit back, right? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I think that that's pretty cool. I like those guys. I love it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's it's I, for nothing nothing more than just actually getting to see Kenny back. Like I am legit liking that because Kenny can still go. Yeah, and he's young. You know, he's only like I don't even know if he's thirty yet. Yeah, I think he's like late twenties. Yeah, so considering he was in WWE 10 years ago, I think I read – or back then, I th- I think he was like 18, 19 or something like that. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but yeah, the dude's young, and he's been on the independent scene the whole time, so I wouldn't be surprised if he stuck around. And then after that, I know uh, there's probably a black level sighting, and, uh, which is probably I, I, when I fast forward. I got to talk about that, man. I'm sorry. You know, this, I was excited, like legit excited for this Curtis Hawkins or this Kurt Hawkins coming back and, and, uh, who's supposed to, they teased him coming or fighting at no mercy and he does his, yeah, he does his shtick, comes to the ring and says, I will be fighting on SmackDown this Tuesday, then goes outside the ring and then Tuesday comes and he was nowhere to be found at all. There was no mention of him in the entire program. And yeah. This week comes. And he comes down the ring. And he's doing Eva Marie's entrance. Yep. All the way to the ring. Gets sucker punched, which wasn't really even a sucker punch. And it says, Kurt Hawkins. You have ruined it for everyone. Kurt Hawkins is now leaving the ring and not going to fight. And then he tucks tail and runs all the way out. I I don't think we're ever going to see this guy fight, man. I don't even think this is a gimmick. I think there's something (laughs) legit wrong or something. And (laughs) they're just looking for a filler space, man. Just honestly, him and Eva Marie need to have like this fake battle or something like that. And, I think that'd be more interesting than what they're doing right now with the both of them. Yeah, I wonder when Eva, Eva Marie's going to come back. I don't think that thirty days back. is by far up. I'm, yeah, it's it's over, but she's in a movie. Like she's doing movie a movie right now, so she's going to be gone for quite some time. I don't think she's coming back, man. Yeah, probably no point. Well, and then uh, yeah, Black Neville. I didn't really care about him and Kurt Hawkins nor uh, Baron Corbin because I knew he was going to beat Jack Swagger anyways. Yeah, but he put so, a beating on that boy. I know we're going to have a completely different opinion on this, so I'll go ahead and let you rant. Uh, oh! The main event. Just talk. What I did, dude, what did I tell you last week? What did I tell you last week? I don't remember because I, I stopped paying attention when you said you were a fan of James Ellsworth and you were a fan <laughs> of him picking up the win last week. I was, man, for two, for two reasons, man, two reasons. One, because I was excited that AJ 
was going to be furious that he got took a loss from James Ellsworth and being the professional that he is, that he would take it personal and that he was going to put a whooping on James Ellsworth <laughs> the following week. Yeah. That's why I was such a fan of it. And, like, we don't we don't see that kind of passion anymore, man. Like, we, I mean, we've got it in the Dolph Ziggler and the and the Miz confrontation, but now we're getting to see it on the world in, in the world championship, and it's and it's it's great. You know, the only thing that I don't like about this whole thing is that Dean Ambrose is kind of attached to it, and he's getting the title fight for doing essentially nothing but being an annoying little gnat. Yeah. But it, to me, like, it's just fun. I'm, sus- I'm being able to suspend belief. And although I love AJ, I find myself just having fun with the aspect or with the potential possibility that Ellsworth might actually pull off the win. And this, the storytelling, the psychology inside the ring is, 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 completely completely amazing and that's just a testament to how great aj styles is like he can put on a great match just like jericho against anyone and make it look great and dude i thought it was fun man and (laughs) shout out to put together james ellsworth intro man that intro that intro the title Intron, as well as the music, was better than almost everybody's intro or music on Raw, bruh. How is that even possible? Yeah. So I still don't like the champ losing to a jobber. Uh, But I will say Ellsworth had a pretty sweet chin, no chin music. I thought, no chin music! So, who was it who said that? Was that Otunga that said that? That was Otunga, bruh. So I got to say, man, he... he I, y'all know, y'all know, I am not a fan of Otunga at all. But this week, homie gets a pass. He was on point with that commentary. And you know, and even JBL, man, let's give it up for JBL, man. He, he was, they, they called that match better than, than Morrow called that match. And it was, it was fun, man. It, I, abs- I, I had a blast watching that match. I probably watched it three or four times. That chin lock, the AJ put <laughs> <laughs> he slipped out of the chin lock. And, and he pointed at his chin like, oh, no chin. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, come on, man. Like, I think SmackDown did a great, like, in hindsight, like, you might not like the fact that AJ took a pen, but you have to remember, man, we're going, like, four or five weeks without a pay-per-view for SmackDown oh, right now. Point. Yeah, good point. Right. I think and you, good. you got, it's kind of like, it's kind of like watching The Walking Dead, right? You got, how many, how many episodes does Walking Dead, like, 12 or 13, right, for the season? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So, if you've noticed in the past, like, five or six seasons, They've got basically two seasons within one. So you have one storyline going, usually starting in episode one and ending in episode six. And then you have another episode, six through 12, which the 12th episode kind of leads into the, the next season. So you kind of have to see it like this because we're going to have droughts like this every four months where one of the, one of the, how do you say? one of the brands is going to go on an extended lapse before the next pay-per-view, um, b- which is going to be a joint pay-per-view. So you're going to see that leading up to the Royal Rumble. You're going to see that leading up to WrestleMania. You're going to see that leading up to SummerSlam. You're going to see that leading up to Survivor Series. So you're going to have they, they're going to have to fit in two separate storylines to bridge the gap between their last pay-per-view and then the combined pay-per-view in order to make this interesting. And you can't just build for six weeks one storyline for the main championship. You just it can't do it. You're the the person Raw's going to try to do this and they're gonna fail miserably and it's gonna be in the worst shape that it's ever been. SmackDown, this formula was great. We watched two weeks, two weeks of something that shouldn't ever be at a pay-per-view at all, but it has kept us hooked on on the ep- on the episodic week, man. I, I thought it was brilliant, True. man. I, I thought it was brilliant. 
That's a good way to put it. I didn't even think about that. Is that we don't have a a SmackDown ch championship coming up anytime soon, or SmackDown pay per view? Excuse me, coming up anytime soon. I haven't thought about it, but now that you mentioned that, if I was to reconsider the way I think about it, then I gotta, uh, you know, now that you mentioned that, and I recon really reconsider it. You get <laughs> <laughs> such a troll, bro. <laughs> That's what you get. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Because I'm just not... I hate it. I hate that Ellsworth won. Uh, it's cheap. It's cheap. The champ shouldn't lose like that. Especially a guy who beat John Cena twice. And and then just pinned him again. So he, he beat John Cena the first time. Then beat him with an elbow. Um, with a phenomenal forearm, excuse me. And then just beat him in the triple threat. That's that's what I think. Good day, sir. That's what it gets because I, I just can't. I it, and it's entertainment, but he doesn't have to win, and the end result will still be the same. You acting uh, like yeah, but look, man, you 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 you're acting like you beat him fair and square, man. Come on, man. It, it was a it was a protected finish, and it, it kept people invested in a jobber. For a second week, like, come on, man. That, and you know what? And then the next week, when we actually get to see him, Ellsworth, he's gonna have that nameplate on the side that's gonna say "Beat AJ Styles," <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be the greatest thing ever. Man. I, I just, I can't. I, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm, I you think it's cool, and I really want to see. I'm gonna mark out, and I'm not gonna lie. When he shows up, as Number thirty in the Royal Rumble, yes. <laughs> dude. This is it's this generation's version of the one, two, three kid, man. And Gilbert, and you're right, you're right. I'll, I'll, I'm willing to give it. He's still better than Black Neville. I'm willing to give it a, a a second a second thought. We'll see where this story's going. Yeah, and dude, he's. Can we talk about how big that pop was that you got? Oh, after the chin music. Yes. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you did this, but when you hit the chin music, I looked around the crowd, and they were actually legit on their feet. Like, yes, they were. Oh, this yeah. might really win this match. You know, Dude, it's funny. AJ sold the hell out of that chin music, man. He sold it yeah. so well, man. I legit thought that he was going to lose that title, man. So you know what? So, okay, maybe I am changing my mind a little bit because it brings me back to a match that I saw in the, maybe I think it was 2000, and it was Taka Michinoku versus Triple H on Sunday Night Heat. So obvious, and this was when Triple H was in his prime as a game. So obviously, you know, Taka Michinoku didn't stand a chance. However, he hit the Michinoku driver, and Triple H made it a good match, and he hit the pedigree and won at the end, but Triple H made it this really good match. On a Sunday night heat, nobody watched Sunday night heat. And it reminds me of that. Like, wow, you have this this main event guy carrying this match and can and he's actually convincing the fans, oh crap, I might lose. So yeah, kudos to AJ for that. And we'll see if if, if Ellsworth's on SmackDown next week at all. God. But he's not even officially signed to any brand, man. And he's No, I know, that's the best part. Yeah, that's definitely definitely the best part, man. I will say this, man. Let me, I primarily for me when I watch wrestling, or the reason why I watch wrestling is one, I want to suspend belief because I feel like if I do, it's a it's a stress reliever from everything else that's going on in in real life, right? But then two, like, am I legit having fun watching? the product watching whether it's whether it's as a whole or whether it's at per, you know a, a particular segment and if i can say yes to both of those if i can legit bring out that kid in me that you know at seven and at eight fell in love with watching mr perfect put the perfect plex on on people or, or do the test of of might to the british bulldog and say oh <laughs> you son of a bitch <laughs> yeah yeah, like, yeah if i if i can get back to that i i feel like the product has done a good job and and 
that match legit brought me back to those days and I, I appreciate it for that man i i really do and and i, I had fun man and yeah i, I definitely want to see where it's going but I, I don't want dean anywhere near the title man i he doesn't they haven't built it him awkward. yeah it's it's awkward like he's getting the title match for what like aj didn't screw him out of anything yeah. So no, I, I, I would rather watch him see or fight someone else. And I still hold by the belief that AJ is going to lose the belt before the Royal Rumble. But, yeah, so. he might. Um, but so that's another thing is the SmackDown for, for a better show. Their main event scene is incredibly weak. Especially since AJ and uh, Cena have already fought. Like they're their main event scene is pretty weak. It, it is, but for, I mean, come on, man. The, the debate had to switch from Tuesdays to Wednesdays just because they, the last time they competed against SmackDown, they lost hmm. terribly. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> jokes aside, yeah, you're right. They're, the main scene in terms of like star power is definitely not there. But somehow they're still being able to put on great shows with the talent that they have versus their predecessors or counterpart, Raw. So yeah. how's that, how's that? You know, it it goes to show you, man. It just it doesn't really matter specifically who's who's in the ring, but what you actually do with them. Yeah, true. So uh, before who's we running go, the show, who's running the show? The face that runs the place. So, <laughs> before we go, because I know we're about close to that hour mark, um, is it bad that the New Day and Enzo and Cass are on the exact same roster? You're saying because they're kind of like the same gimmick? Yeah, they're the two most over face tag teams on the same show. When we don't have, outside of the Usos, great heel tag teams at the moment. Yeah, I see what you're saying, man. I honestly, I think that they might have thought by drafting Enzo and Cass to SmackDown, I mean to Raw, that you could kind of ease up off of the New Day from having to be funny, and eventually be able to break them up, and then then Enzo and Cass would probably be oh, able to stay in that spot. That's maybe that explains why Enzo and Cass haven't been on TV as much lately. Yeah, I think that's eventually what they're going to end up going with it, man. But I still hold by fast that if you're not married or in the, in the process of being married, you're not going to be on the same on the same product. So, I mean, that's why we see Carmella not on the same product as as in or as as Big Cass, and that's why we see Rusev and Lana on the same. We see Nikki and Cena on the same brand. I think that yeah. that was the formula that they did. Uh, when they did this this brand split, so I don't know, man. But yeah, man, I, I I think Raw lost this week, despite them having Goldberg. I don't think it was enough to, from a overall product standpoint. Well, it's all they had, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean that you're right. It, that was essentially all they had. So. Yeah, I agree. I think SmackDown still just a little bit of a better show. So. Uh, other than that, I didn't have anything else. Any other topics you got? Oh, no, man. I'm, that's pretty much it. Although I do have a comment from one of our audio subscribers. Um, they wanted me to let you know that when you're doing your – to make sure that you remember what your damn screen name is because every time, every week, you keep changing it. It's because I'm trying to keep you fools on their toes. <laughs> Are you talking about uh... – uh, are you talk. Oh yeah, when we're cutting up and and I'm leaving. That's do we right. really have? A, you really had a. Yeah, I guess we did have a comment about somebody saying, "What the hell is Ben Goosen's uh, Twitch handle and Twitter handle?" Because I think, what's I think I botched it. Go watch Botchmania. That's all I'll say. You can see me <laughs> botch whatever it is that I'm trying to sell or to to say to people. You you know you know what it was. I think the other week I got my email and my. I think my Twitter handle or something like that confused or uh, t mixed up, but 
Uh, if you do want to follow me on Twitter, it's Ben underscore Goosen. Ben underscore Goosen. And if you want to go to Twitch, it's the same thing. Twitch.tv backslash Ben underscore Goosen. And pretty much don't listen to anything I just said. Just go to our website and click on the links to follow me and how to get in touch with me. Hit me up on DM uh, if you want. And whoever whoever put that comment, obviously you listened. So hit me up. on Hit me up. Make fun of me. Just say, hey, man, you idiot. You stupid idiot. I really don't care. I think it's actually pretty funny. So I appreciate you saying that. And yeah, you're right. I should have known what it was. I think I just got a couple of them confused at, uh, at the moment. But um, yeah, definitely whoever it was that left that comment, I really appreciate you leaving that comment. And now I think about it when you do follow me on Twitter, because you, you may already at Ben underscore Goosen, uh, there's a list of people that are blocked. And since you called me out, guess what? Hmm? Guess what? Huh? Huh? You just made the list. Oh! Blocked. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, be sure to subscribe on Twitter to our channel at Real WrestleCast. I'm your boy Sage the Mark. You can find me on Twitter at Sage the Mark. It's about to be Ben Goosen right there. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, uh, use our website irwp.us. Share, like, get the word out. We appreciate all the love and support, guys. Keep it up, and uh, best of all. Just keep it real. Later.